my decisions, my choices. Um, that's my responsibility, and I take responsibility for it. I have wanted people to know when I get a chance to talk to them that I'm deeply sorry for what happened, and it's nobody else's responsibility. It's mine. We always have choice. We have uh, Kyle Lenzi, okay? Pastor Kyle Lenzi is in the building. Now, what is the situation with Kyle Lenzi, okay? Kyle Lenzi, he was song. I mean, he was at the top of his game. When I say at the top, I mean at the top, okay? Celebrities, they, you name it, anything, okay? He was a rock star, <laughs> a rock star pastor, okay? So this is also one thing we shouldn't be showing partiality in these issues, okay? Because I know the situation with Pastor Tony Evans, if that was uh, Jamal Bryant, if that was Andy Stanley, come on now, <laughs> You know how we, 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 we hey, I misunderstand me. What's the deal, man? <laughs> it's been a minute. I haven't seen anything about Pastor Understanding. But we have uh, Kyle Lenzi, okay? Pastor Kyle Lenzi uh, was a senior pastor at Houston, New York. I already did uh, his videos out in the past. And he also disqualified himself from ministry. He's still disqualified. There's no need for him to come back on the pulpit. I'll have, I'll, I won't be surprised, okay? Because these people think like after they've taken a hiatus, they can just come back, okay? But uh, Kyle Lenze has repented, okay? You ask me, I'm convinced of his repentance. So let's uh, take a look and then uh, we're going to go through the video, okay? So this is um, Carl Lancy. Okay, let's take a look. Is it fault in this whole situation? You know, because there was things yeah. thrown around in that space yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at fault. I'm at fault. My decisions, my choices, um, that's my responsibility and I take responsibility for it. I have wanted people to know when I get a chance to talk to them that I'm deeply sorry for what happened and it's nobody else's responsibility. It's mine. We always have choice. We always have our own agency to do what we feel like we have to do. And I mismanaged my personal life. I hid things that I should not have hid. Uh, I lied about things I shouldn't have lied about. I was confused about who I was at times. Didn't get any help for it. And the result was a whole lot of pain for a whole lot of people, which I will remain deeply sorry for for the rest of my life. I don't live in the shame of it, but I'll never forget the impact that it had on people. And it's nobody else's fault. It's my fault. And I feel like when you're in a situation where you have made mistakes, um, you have two options. You can point out the window and try to find other people that are more guilty, as guilty, and you feel that need to deflect blame, yeah. or you look in the mirror. And I feel like we've done the best job we can. I know I have worked really hard at staying in the mirror. What did I do? What's my responsibility? What's my role in this? What part in the story did I play? And I am so heavy throughout it that I don't have a lot of time anymore to worry about other people's role in the story. But what happened to our marriage and what happened to my platform, it was my fault and my responsibility, nobody else's. And that's just the truth. That's just the way that I see it. It's the way that I accept it. It's the way that I relate to it. And my job now is to, be a, is to make living amends. As I've explained to you, um, when you, when you wrong people and you hurt people and you offend people and you break the trust of people, you, uh, if you're truly about owning what you did, you try to make amends. And I've done that. So, guys, that's uh, Kyle Lenz. I watch this. To me, what can you say? He has accepted the responsibilities. He has acknowledged it. And they, he, there's no sugarcoating it. That's how, you, that's how you do repentance. Okay? That's how you do it. So to me, I'm seeing this. Um, I'm glad that he, 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 he received the healing that he was looking for. And he's at this stage and he's letting people know where he's at. He has taken full responsibility. He's not blaming anybody for the mistakes that he made. And he understands. And I'm also glad that uh, his wife didn't leave him. They stayed together as a family. According to their own testimony, all those challenges, it has made them, or it has uh, knit them together as a family than they were before. So my issue with him would be like, okay, 
What are you doing at a force church in Oklahoma? Where are you going Sunday instead of you to go listen to the word of God preached? You're going every Sunday for an entertainment that's going on. But from where he was to where he is right now, this, this is what somebody who's been remorseful, who is repentant, looks like with everything that he's saying. Until he does something otherwise, then we're going to judge him accordingly. But from where he's coming from to where he is right now, this is how you repent. So now, hey man, uh, do we, guess what? You don't have to be asking, oh, so what did he, uh, he do? You see what I'm saying? Because hey man, he, he's out here. Okay. Now the question to ask was like, okay, you know, would you have repented done these things if you didn't get caught? Okay. Cause like, Hey, you know, you always wait right until the last minute. Like I said, he's been in a minister for a very long time himself too. Every, when he was young out there and he was so the same thing with Brian Newson. all that time they were just going, going down, going, going down. And then until uh, he fell from the scene, he, excuse me. He lost everything. Uh, he didn't even have anywhere else to go. Need, had nowhere else to live. All the celebrities, all whatever, all whatever, friends, they were all gone. You see, this is what happens. Like Sin takes you far than you planned. And all these people that you're making, like that's how you find out who your real friends are, like the fake friends are. This, this is what happens, right? Like, you know, the humbling experience that he experienced it. So, you know, uh, James 5, 16, you know, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So how are you going to be, you, you want the healing without confessing your sin. You cannot confess the sin without you telling the people you're confessing to the sin that you're, you're confessing. Okay. James 5, 16 is clear. We know that, you know, that situation went down because he got caught, right? But now that he got caught, he had two options. He could have just either just went his way and acted whatever. But right now, he's a, here he is, right? He, he, he's saying it publicly. He's confessed. He has repented. So we're going to trust the thing that he's telling us is true, right? Until he shows us otherwise. But as it stands, yeah, man. So far, so good. Okay? Because when I listen to it, I'm like, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> so uh, let's continue. Let's listen to some more. Well, then I feel like it's been appropriate. But when you're a public figure person and you hurt people on a bigger scale, your whole life has to be a living amends. Yeah. And that's what I plan on doing. I can't, you know, go up to every single person that was a part of our beautiful church and say, I'm sorry to you. I can't do it. It's not, it's not possible. But I can live a life of integrity and honesty that gives people reason to believe and gives people reason to have hope. And I cannot change people. I can't change their minds. <laughs> big, big revelation for me <laughs> in this chapter. What I can do is live a life of integrity and honesty. And nobody cares about what my words are when it comes to that. I don't care. You don't care what my words are. But if you're truly repentant and you're sorry about something, your words need to be said, but it'll change the way you think. And when you change the way you think, it changes the way you act. That's true repentance. So I feel like we've got a couple years now of, of fruit of what we've been trying to do. But that's my goal. You know, I, if people want to believe, if people want to follow, if people want to listen, that's their right. I can't change them. But what I can do is continue to recover, be who I feel like I'm called to be, be your husband, be a dad, and leave my life on display like it's always been. Say, so if you watch the bad parts of it, well, the story's still continuing. Right. This is the story. Take it or leave it. This is who we are. And that's my goal, just to live, to live a life of... Uh, of living amends. I really want to be able to say this to you in public because you were, um, your reputation was damaged in public. You had nothing to do with my hidden sin and hidden habits and hidden addictions. You did not know what was going on with me. And I know there's been some confusing reports where people can try to piece something together and say, you know, Laura, was she complicit? Did she know? And that's just not true. It's not our story. You didn't know anything about what I was doing because I became really proficient at making my life work despite a lot of pain. And there were times where you asked me questions to my face and I didn't give you honest answers. There were other times where I even tried to make your, your reality confused. And um, you're just a, you're a, a beautiful human being and your character has never ever been in question. There's never been a complaint about you. You are the most lovable person and the most loved person that I've ever known. You were the backbone of our church, um, the leader to so many people and you did not deserve what I gave you, which is a scandal that's humiliating. You deserve better. And you've had to stand strong 
and watch people even even start to try to bring you into stories that are so malicious and so evil. Again, that's on me. It's not even on the liars. But I'm so sorry that it happened. I've, I've apologized to you to the point you've told me to stop apologizing. But it's so it's freeing. It feels really good for me to be able to say you had nothing to do with what I was doing. You didn't find out and then cover it up and right. try to keep it going. Like you've never cared about that. You never cared about our role like that. You would never stand for that. And it just got to the point where I think God had had enough. And I'm grateful for that. I look back now at that situation. I don't even relate to it as, um, as this horrible tragedy. I relate to it now as a moment in our story that I got saved again, that I got a chance to be. All right. So that's uh, Kao Lenzi just acknowledging the things to his wife. Uh, he did share that he, he went to therapy, uh, what, counseling, you know. <clears throat> I don't know if it was a biblical counseling. Some of it, if you ask me, do I think he went to a, to a, a sorry biblical counselor, my answer would be no. But I think because, you know, the, the Bible knowledge that he, he knows and the thing that he, the counseling that he received, coupled all that, I think he, it has uh, helped him. And, you know, he's involved with um, Mike Todd, Tim Ross. So it looks like these people around him who, quote unquote, have sort of like helped him. I don't think uh, his theology has changed as far as like oh, out here still acknowledging the wife, you were a leader and everything. I don't think those things have gone anywhere by them still being at um, Oklahoma at the Mike Todd's church. But all in all, with from where he was at to publicly humble himself like this, I think it's a good thing. To me, I do. Do I think he's going to come back to ministry? Absolutely, I think so. I just don't see Carl Lindsay to be one who be like, you know what? I no longer belong on the pulpit. I can save, you know, if he wants to do a podcast, he can go ahead and just continue doing a podcast. I think he can do that. He doesn't. I don't trust uh, that he can stay without. I don't trust him not to come back to the pulpit is what I'm saying. Do I think he should come back to the pulpit? No, he should come back to the pulpit because he disqualified himself. Because once he comes back to the pulpit, every time people are in the congregation, you're speaking to this woman or whatever, people are just going to be, that picture always be there, okay? So you don't want to be maintaining that appearance of evil. So for me, he should just continue doing a podcast. No need for him to go back to, uh, to the ministry. He didn't say anything so far that he wants to start a church, things of that nature, No. They just want to be doing this podcast. They are healing. They want to share their story so they can help other people. So I'm sure there will be other people who are going to be helped with this. When he posted this on his um, Instagram, there were people who were so happy, so excited to have him back and sharing also their stories, how people have overcome their marriages. So hey, God is able to use any situation with anybody. If this situation brings somebody to God, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If this situation helps somebody, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Right? So anything that is anything that is good, it is good. Right? If something is bad, it's bad. So, well, good for their family. Good for Carl Lindsay that he's in this situation. So we hope that he, he will be completely restored and be, you know, a faithful um, husband and the dad uh, to his children as they continue their journey of healing. So that's what I would say as far as Carl Lindsay. You know, am I ex expecting a state of theology from Carl Lindsay? No, I'm not. But from where he was to where he's at at this stage in life, I think this is a positive uh, change for him. So let's hope that he'll continue to be in that situation. Okay.